All right, we're going to do like, what, half hour, 40 minutes on this, and then we'll do. All right. Yeah. Okay, let me start. Oh, you know what? Sorry. We're already fucking recording. All right. no, my, Edit out the beginning. It's I fine. I launched the off in five minutes. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to be difficult. I literally. I just don't want us to be recording. And it goes. You had the timer? Yeah. Well, then you're going to slip out and come back in before the timer goes okay, out. Okay, it's fine. Because that's. Oh, my God. I'm so happy that that's right, go, in go, the go, recording. Go, 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 I'm go, 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 go. Start it. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? You are listening to another episode of The Net Chicks. We are here with Mal and Liv, and we have a special guest, Matt, here to discuss the Oscars with us because... How are you? I mean, I'm good. How are you guys? We're we're swell. We're doing super swell. Yeah. We yeah, have some technical um, difficulties. Yeah, we were having technical this difficulties. Um, our lovely guest was a little late, but it's fine. Now we're here. We're working it out. Um... We and I'm happy to be here. Good. We have talked about We're this. Happy from, to have you. <laughs> yeah, happy to have you. We talked about this in the beginning, even when he did uh, one of the Riverdale rundowns, um, that Matt was probably like the best person that we know to be on our Oscars episode. So, um, the Oscars were this Sunday. Yeah. First, how did you feel about it? Let's talk. All right. Let's first. Talk. I have some strong opinions, as we have been talking about for weeks yes. with a lot of these shows. I mean, movies rather. But my big takeaway, just right off the bat, was um, I didn't miss a host at all. I was very happy no hosts. And I think really every, I think every award show, but like the Tonys, should go forward without a host because I do think the Tonys kind of like it adds something a little bit. Yeah. But I think. Why do we have hosts now? Hosts are so stupid. Well, I think under the right circumstances, there shouldn't be a host. And I think this was this like the time where there really shouldn't be a host. I think maybe next year that might not be the case because they have had in the past no host and it turned out like terrible. But I think this year it just like worked out in their favor for the climate and everything. A host in general is someone that is kind of like an intermediary between the audience and the stars and the people there it's someone to help move the show along and i agree that i enjoyed it without a host but i don't think the academy should use this as a precedent going forward yeah. i think they should actively be looking for a host right like so, you, don't, you don't need the parts of the bits the comedy some right is some but you That's, need one in case there is a like in two years ago what happened with mm -hmm. la la land and moonlight you need someone that right, will, that's true Diffuse the tension. I, mean, I think Jimmy Kimmel did a good job with that. And I agree. Right. Um, but that's why I think you need a host. And so was, my thing is that they, I don't, I just don't think a host is used properly in recent you're, years. You're, then, exactly. Yes. Except for that. I, when I think of a host, I think of when I used to watch the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards, you know, like I always thought that sounds like a silly, stupid example, but I always thought the hosts were with that like had a real role. I feel like a lot of times when you watch award shows, it doesn't feel like hosts have a role, yeah. except for the opening bit. And I was, I was like thinking about this, like I was reading about this, how all these major award shows always, especially the Oscars, always want a comedian, right. yet they never really consider like comedy as some sort of art form to even award in this uh, award show. What you think about it? Like they want, they true. want so badly a host, a comedic host to put along the award show, but they really won't honor it. H comedy, which is like crazy to me to think that because like comedies and well, because yeah. I just I know that I am like in the minority of people who like speak about this, but I was. It's the same kind of thing. Like why I was all in on Best Picture, you know. I just think that the like. The Oscars should be a little more representative of normal people, not just people who are critiquing movies and are looking for the art form of it all. Like, have a best picture, but also have like the best popular movie, or like include horror movies in the no. category. Like, I don't have well, a problem the best with that kind movie, of stuff. Go to the MTV Awards. I'm just saying, yeah. like, if you want a comedian though to be like, let's yeah. make this more lighthearted and fun, then represent that in your categories. And I I kind of agree with that because. 
I feel like everyone shits on popular movies a lot more. So that's why a lot of them aren't, especially in recent years, that they haven't really been getting honored or even nominated. Yet some of these popular movies are good movies. Like, right. I know you can see Black Panther, but, like, Black Panther was... it. I don't think it should have gotten as many awards as it did, but it was a good enough movie to be nominated, I, I think. What and, it did get awarded for, I think it deserved. Yes, yes exactly. It absolutely deserved those awards. And, you know, like, we can't say that, like, the Oscar never nominates popular movies because, obviously, look, like, look at, Titanic. But, yeah, Titanic brought yeah, in 55 million views for the Oscars. And, and look at such- look at even 10 years ago when they first introduced the 10, the lineup of 10 Best yeah, Picture yeah. nominees, The Blind Side, oh, yeah. Avatar. So you can't ma- you can't make the case that um, they need a best popular film category when they they can just nominate in best picture. Sometimes right. it just doesn't correlate. That's the problem. No, I know. I'm just saying. Like I think the reason they wanted to include that initially was because I'll tell you why. I, that was an ABC move. Ratings have been going down everywhere. Yeah, and ABC yeah. just signed last year a, a, a new ten year deal with the Oscars. So obviously they're concerned that, you know, if the ratings keep going down every year, it's going to be no one. Yeah, yeah. So that's right. why there was a push. That's why a lot of the the things they tried to do with this ceremony, a lot of it, I think personally, was ABC was behind. Definitely the three-hour rule. Definitely oh, yeah. the best popular film. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were the ones trying to get the um, categories during commercials. Because for them, it's more right, of a money but- thing. I think I think ultimately what's going to happen is I think they should move to like a Hulu or streaming site and they'd be able to keep it on for as long as they want, do whatever they want. Right. And, and they won't have, to worry have about as many commercials. But, but who knows what's going to happen? Maybe that'll happen in 20 years. But but you know what? I'm just like, I just don't. I, I don't know. I think everyone, for the most part, has a problem with, oh, what they are trying to do for ratings, what they're trying to do. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do for ratings. Like, no one watches the Oscars Sci Tech Awards or whatever that they have that they just, in the commercial break, start mentioning because no one cares about that. You know what I mean? Like, nobody, if they, they, if they want people to watch it, then they need to worry about ratings and they need to worry well, about who's and, watching and that, it because then right. nobody's going to care about winning these awards. Yeah. That, that's where I think they went in with the presenters. Like, right. think, about, think about, you saw the show, Serena Williams. Chris uh, Williams. Chris Evans, Jason Momoa, the TV stars, uh, Constance Wu. Oh, I yeah, guess Constance she was in, she was in Crazy Rich Asians and, yeah. and ABC, and so that, whatever. They had Barbara frickin' Streisand. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I, I, I do think, though, the, if, the one problem I did have with the show was the presenters. I really didn't think there was enough star power there, if that makes sense. Like, I was looking forward to, like, Tom Hanks. You know, He's probably going to be there next year. Tom Hanks, you know, uh, Meryl, uh, you know, even like going back to Harrison Ford. Like, how come Adam Driver didn't present? Why didn't they have Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper present? Like, what? I, I just it, it felt very. Um, Maybe they didn't want to like push the narrative of like well Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Well, no, no, like like well, I know they had all the people from Black Panther. Like, but where were all the other? Like, I feel like what so, it was lacking was was star power. I know, but what I when I looked at it, when I what I saw was like Jason Momoa and Chris Evans, who were in movies that were popular this year, but not necessarily going to be honored at this show. Like Amanda presented uh, yes. one of the best yes. picture yes. things because she was in a movie that was popular this year, but wasn't going to be recognized. You know okay. what I mean? It's was that hey, kind of yeah. stuff. Oh, okay. Hey, you yeah. give, yeah. I that's what I felt like was the their move to kind of include yeah. those lesser movies this year in you know what i mean to con- because people you still hope. like aquaman even oh, though no, it's I, not I an award winning movie but oh. it's then you want to see yeah. jace momoa at that kind of a thing because you yeah. like that movie yeah i i agree with that and i don't know i kind of also agree with you too there wasn't that much star power because like usually and it's the I feel Oscars. Like this is like, I it's feel like, the, yeah. It's the, like, this is like, this the, is the end of the Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, and this is like the A list celebrities. This is like, where was Nicole night. Kidman, is... Reese Witherspoon? Well, like, Reese Witherspoon hasn't like gone in a few years. Yeah, but I mean, she's a, she's popular now with, and she's also a best and actress. And she's a best actress winner. 
Nicole Kidman, same story yeah. there. Meryl Streep, I think, is like her first one she Meryl, hasn't gone to Meryl, in a while. Meryl usually doesn't go unless she's nominated, so I get that. But, but she's been nominated, like, what, 22 yeah. times? I want to go on the record and say that if I was a famous actress and I wasn't nominated, I would not attend the Oscars. Yeah, so, I, well, and, and, you, and you, you can't hate that move. A lot yeah. of them don't. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it's more of a, I don't know. But I think Jack overall, I think overall, the it was a good ceremony. And it could have been a lot worse. And, and I think they did a great job. Yeah. And I think we like talked about this too, especially with the Emmys. Like, I think this was a good ceremony also because it wasn't so like political. They didn't like kind no. of just kept it. I, I thought that was honestly very refreshing. I just thought it moved along really well. There wasn't it time did. for that. Yeah. And the problem is with the host, the problem with the host is that you would have had gimmicks in the middle. Yeah, exactly. E- a bit. Like, I don't care about Ellen DeGeneres coming out for whatever show she was hosting in a Glinda costume. Like to me, I'm like, what? What a waste you of time. You know what though? I will say though, in the past, I guess, ten years, I think she's been my favorite Oscar host. I thought of that was because she's character. very genuine. It's very yeah. Ellen. Yeah. The same kind compared of compared to when do Neil Patrick show. Harris did it the year after. Yeah. I yeah. thought he was not good at all, because and he's, he's great at the Tony. Yeah, he's such a Tony's host. Yeah. That's what I, I really and think. His gimmicks fell flat. Yeah. I think the Tonys are where the host is most relevant. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. But uh, you do need a host. That's why I will say it was good without a host, but that this should be a last option resort, last resort. In the end, I think it all worked out because I don't think Kevin Hart really, when he announced that he was going to host, I was like, listen, like, I don't think he would have been a good host. The Academy yesterday should have called The Rock and just said, please open your schedule now. (laughs) (laughs) Like, please keep these dates open. He would have been. He would have been good. Because so, he, he so saw never, the Nickelodeon and, show. Yeah. and you'll never know. You never know. Maybe he'll do it next year. Maybe he will, yeah. So fingers but, crossed. Yeah. And I and the other thing that was good is I think the the wins and the speeches I actually really enjoyed this I year liked for the, the most part. This year. I think I think the Academy got it right for the most part, but um I think the speeches were actually really nice too, especially the two Black Panther women. Yeah. Um I was gonna go off on that because the one woman who won for fashion design, and we were, I was just like reading a lot of the trivia going on on like Twitter, and yeah. one woman for fashion design, she waited 29 years since her first uh, nomination, which is crazy to me because like we don't really see that with a lot of like the behind the scenes Oscars because like some of these people have been nominated like 22 times and they only win like once. Yeah. After like, well, because that's the thing yeah. is when you're a big time costume designer, you, you get re- not recycled, but you get hired a lot for big time movies. Yeah. So you do get those nominations a lot. Um, I felt very. Uh, let's go through some of. I don't want to say the lesser awards, but the lesser awards. Yeah. I am so confused. Oh, about, with sound editing and film editing. Yeah, I don't understand sound editing at all. I'm so confused. Uh, yeah. So it's. It's not like music. It's it's like the actual like audio. The actual audio. Sound there was like no yeah. actual yeah. audio in Bohemian Rhapsody. It was all the stupid songs. I, I you know what? I there, I agree with you in a way. Sound editing and sound mixing is more of like mixing the tracks and the the audio part of it. Sound mixing I can get. Sound editing. Sound have... mixing is usually a musicals. Those right. usually tend to win so that. So that award. to me, I don't have a problem with that. And I got that vibe, especially also that A Star Is Born was in that category, that it was, like, that kind of a thing. Black, Black Panther Foot. was in that. First uh-huh. Man. It's that kind of stuff. I got yeah, that. I, but I, This was in it, too, because that was all sound editing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, um, do I think they no, should... A, want si- a Quiet Place was in sound editing, not sound mixing. Yeah. That's yes, what I'm, I'm saying. saying. Oh. We're talking... Okay, so, but sound there is a difference. editing... I don't know what the... What, yeah, I... To I, have I, Bohemian Rhapsody win that over... A quiet place. I didn't see Roma, but even like First Man with like the all like the spacey kind of stuff. I, I don't know how a quiet man. place doesn't come away with sound editing hands down though. Yeah, you're right. I I kind of agree with that. I don't know. I think they just the critics really liked Bohemian Rhapsody. The critics didn't. Why. The critics didn't. <laughs> the critics didn't like Bohemian Rhapsody. It was the I mean all the voters. The, vo- the, it, the, the voters. I'm did. so. What are you talking? Did you see that clip? That was going around Twitter. Yes, the that film was... editing. And he won yeah. for that. It was that whole scene when the manager comes in 
and hey, like list. around it's the like, table. Hey, let me give you your new boyfriend to be your manager. Yeah, yeah that's. I think I had epilepsy the first time. Exactly. I don't understand. How. I honestly think they want it just for that. I- I'll tell you why. So you know the story about Brian Singer, right? The director. Yeah. So he left seventy five percent of the way in. Right. The editor felt best. Besides best picture and director, I would argue that be- film editing is the third most important award. Yeah, of course. I, in yeah. a lot of years, it usually predicts whoever wins best picture usually wins film editing. Yes. So what happened in Bohemian Rhapsody's case was when Brian Singer filmed, a lot of it went to the editor. Okay. John uh, Ottman, I think his name is. So I don't, I'm not saying it was a condolence prize for him for doing it. But I do think that was a factor in it. I don't that think it should he has had to scramble. No, and I t- I can understand that. Okay. But my thing is, I don't care. Like I, I want to say, so. look at the finished product, and if it's not the best, then you don't win. The live aid part was very well done. Yeah, I think the rest of the film, you know. I think I it was know. solely for the live that. aid. The fact that who they won, rec- who won cinematography? Alfonso Cuarón. Oh, for Roma. Roma. Okay. Yeah. And that yeah. was, and he, he was, he's the first director to do it, to win. Oh, Both. really? Yeah. Oh, I saw that. I, yeah. Yeah, he, I mean, I didn't see the film, but I saw a lot of the, the making of videos and just the way he did some of the shots were actually really nice. Um, would it have been my choice? No. I mean, I still, I'll be honest, on the record, I didn't see Roma. I have, yeah. Yeah, well, when we get to best picture, we'll talk about that. But um, Yeah. I, I, but I did think for the most part, especially the below the line categories, they were very good with who they picked. Yeah, uh, I just don't, Carter I just don't understand Black Bohemian Rhapsody for literally any of these awards. Well, you saw it to for be, the first to time. Be, yeah, I did see it, but to be fair, um, you knew they were going to win film editing because John Ottman won the the Union Award for editing the the ASC award. So if you had to put money on one of them. Right. You would have went with Bohemian. Is it the same voters for like all these things? All these um, awards? not not um, it, it's kind of like a Venn diagram. Like some may be in both, some may be in just one. Right. Like you can be in the Union MBA and Academy member, but you probably are not an Academy member if you're not a Union member. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's for nominations. That's when you pick your own category. Everyone picks the awards. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just think. Actors. Yeah. yeah, Director. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone votes for best picture. Got it. Okay. I'm looking at that. We have to. Um, The other like actor wise that really didn't shock me except for Olivia Coleman. I was happy though that she won. I was too, but I was surprised that Glenn Close didn't because she was just winning everything. Yeah. But Olivia Coleman also won what did she win? BAFTA. She won the BAFTA. Yeah. She won the have, Golden Globe. Which should have been She also won the Golden Globe. In yeah. my eyes, you know, I was just so gung ho on the Glenn train. I didn't even I I was just thinking, oh well you know she's British so she won the British Oscar. Like, okay. But you know you kind of have to take it into effect. And I also was doing a lot of the re- I was doing a lot of research doing the readings. They have those anonymous ballots. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, um, and those were popping. A up lot of them, longer. like the New York Times ones, they interviewed twenty of them. All twenty voted for Rami Malek. Those ones were half Glenn, half Olivia. The Hollywood Reporter ones I read were the same. They were half Glenn, half Olivia. And the ones that said Glenn was not she's you know it's amazing. It it was more of like a sentiment. Well, you know she's nominated. I hope she wins. But the people that were voting for Olivia really liked her and they thought Glenn was going to win which is why well, a factor in how I think Olivia Coleman won that's one of them the right. other one I think is because I was actually talking to a friend of mine I went to brunch with a friend of mine Sunday morning and she goes to me she goes have you seen the wife and I said no but I mean you know I have, I'm it's I, I equated it to a Julianne Moore still Alice win she's okay. the only nomination she's overdue she's gonna win my friend goes I thought it was a lifetime movie she's good in it but like <laughs> The movie sucks. And that's what well, I Well, when the Golden Globe came around and she won, everyone was like, have you ever even heard of this movie? Yeah. That because was thought, be, right. Yeah. Because it was made a few years ago. Sony bought it in 2017 and decided to release it a year later in 2018. 
that's that should have been a yeah. sign that it wasn't good in the first place. The fact that they didn't put it in 2015 yeah. or whenever they bought it, 2017. Right. I so that's so bizarre. I, I, and okay, I, I, that changes things for me a little bit because I get everyone being like she's overdue. It, you're, it's work from years ago then. So yeah. it's it is kind of like I mean I get being like I'm nominated. I want to win. But at the same time, it's like, how long ago did you do this movie? Did you do this movie thinking you were going to win? Yeah, yeah. Probably exactly. not. But... It's, but it's so funny how people were so blindsided. Like, a lot of people were blindsided by this. Dude, that saw... video of their reactions for best action. It's funny. It, that's... Glenn Close is very funny in it. And everyone is focusing on Lady Gaga is so yeah, she's... funny in that. She's like, like, she, like, Glenn is, like, laughing, whatever. Lady Gaga is straight up just, like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. looking around. And I don't think she thought she was going to win. I thought she thinks that, like, she Glenn Close just had win. it in the bag. Yeah. No, I think, I think. Oh, I they think... all did. If you yeah. look at, like, Miss Melissa McCarthy goes, oh, she, <laughs> yeah. she, like, she's going to curse. I mean, Yalitzia, God bless her. She's just, you know, clapping. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No, but, I, you know, God bless her. And then who was the other nominee? Oh, Olivia. Yeah, it was Olivia. Yeah. No, she's I, crying. I think, I think that was, I think they, like, First, Olivia Coleman thought she had it in the bag. She said it. She's like, know, Glenn yeah. Coast, you're my idol. I'm sorry I had to be this way. Something right. like that. So, no, well, that's, I, her speech had me in tears. It was. It was, it was just the most crazy. genuine speech of yeah. all time. And I was, like, laughing the whole time. But for her to be, like, even when she's, like, shouting at her kids, she's, like, watching at home. Well, probably not. I mean, if you are good for you, but, like, you know what I mean? It yeah. was just so off the cuff. And, you know, she was so genuine that that that's what a lot of these actors, that's what they aspire their speeches to sound like. Yeah. Some of their things. Speech. Like, that was a great speech. And the way she talked about, you know, she was a cleaner. She really liked that job. Yeah. <laughs> she was so, she's always like, oh, told me to wrap up. <laughs> like, yeah. it's so funny. She's so, like, genuinely yeah. funny. And they said that. Like, she's... A great person. I'm so happy. Well, because even her Golden yeah. Globe speech was it was so different, but it was the same kind of energy of her being yeah. like, yeah. I just got to eat sandwiches and hang out with my girls, like yeah. my bitches. You know, it was the same kind of thing for her to be. <laughs> and she so... was in a, and she was in a well liked film, which I think benefited her a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do, too. I but there were a lot of factors, I think, that went into her win. And uh, you know what? Going forward, I'm almost kind of happy Glenn didn't win because she has such a great career and it's like to win for the wife. That's true. I'm really, yeah. I'm really hoping that Sunset Boulevard goes into production and she wins for that. Cause I, I yeah, mean, right. I think that's, it also would be kind of like if Meryl Streep won her Oscar for like her first Oscar for like into the woods or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's kind of like a forgettable performance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying with, even with like Amy Adams too, like Amy Adams Same has been nominated her. like six times. I, right. As, I, Cause I genuinely really liked Regina King's performance in if you'll shrink a talk. So great. I really wanted her to win. And right. uh, a lot of people were thinking, oh, well, Amy should get it because, you know, she did not have six times. I don't think her performance, performance was, yeah, like, we saw it. She like, could have, I don't, she just rode the vice wave, really. Yeah, I don't think, I, I didn't want her to win for that. I think she's had, she's such a good actress. I don't think that was, like, her best, you know? Well, I think a lot of people thought her performance in Vice was going to be way more Lady Macbeth than it was. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And when that didn't happen, I mean, I it's tough because the problem with Vice is that you're, the Cheneys in themselves are very, like, mellow-spoken people. Yeah. So it's hard to kind of – like, I think Christian Bale and Amy Adams did an amazing job mm -hmm. of kind of portraying, like, a fer like a ferocity or, like, a cutthroatness, cutthroatness <laughs> with, while also being very, like – unemotional about it you know what i mean but i think people thought it was going to be way more shakespearean than it was yeah and i think also i think the cheneys themselves are very controversial in general right so like like could you imagine like a, a very liberal per person being like i'm going to award you know a someone playing dick cheney or lynn cheney Right. Well, the thing with that, I do what I have to disagree with that about is just it does it doesn't put the Cheneys in a good light. This movie, yeah. <laughs> it, oh it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But I think yeah. the fact but, that voting for a movie like like we 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 have two thousands nostalgia, but like not about the Cheneys. Yeah. yeah, that's true. No, no, I know. But yeah. I mean, Christian Bale won the Golden Globe for it. I, I, and yeah. you know, yeah. I, he was great. I was one of the videos that I watched that people were like putting for their predictions. My favorite was the fact that someone was like, oh, Glenn Coase is going to, if you haven't been keeping up with all the awards, Glenn Coase is going to win the Oscars. And then they put Christian Bale 
as best actor, I was like, well, you obviously haven't been keeping up either because Rob, Rami Malek has been sweeping up all those awards. Yeah. So, which I, I now I'm like sitting down and now I'm thinking about the whole Rami Malek. We have talked to death about this movie. I know. I don't want to talk too much about it because we've talked about him winning best actor so many times. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't wrap my I, head around I, it. I, uh, but he, in all honesty, he had a yeah. great speech. And yeah, he did have a wonderful I don't speech. Think, yeah. I don't think he will... Maybe he'll be up for another nomination sometime soon. Who knows? Bradley Cooper is definitely going to be another... He has God, a great career. I hope he wins. He's going to win. He, I'm so upset because he literally was a director, producer, and actor. He, and, um, and then when, but shit. the problem with him is he could have had actor in the bag if they started the campaign in October with his whole, you know, he's been nominated five times. This is a passion project. Instead of campaigning for director, which is what he was going for, and if he right. decided to play the game by going like on he every, didn't even get nominated. every interview, every... Every, you know, party, every press outlet. If he had just done that, the narrative could have started back and instead of even him and- being like, I'm not going to perform with exactly. the Jackson yeah. Bain voice anymore. Like, it's like, no, if you and the fact he that he the did game. those interviews when he didn't get nominated as like, I feel like I let everyone down because yeah. I didn't get nominated as director. No, at that point, you need to be like. Listen, like I didn't get nominated as director, but I was just as much an actor in this as I was like you well, had to. I- I told her this um, when he lost the Golden Globe um, in the weeks between the Golden Globes and the SAG Awards, I said to Olivia, I said, you can you can notice when you watch ads or campaign ads for A Star is Born, they started. That's when they started showing like actory clips from him. They weren't, you know, when the movie came out in October, it was all, you know, Lady Gaga is an actress. Bradley yeah. Cooper is a director. Where, like, they right. could have had an, a lead actor narrative going. That was because just a... Even I the clips... And him. Even the clips they showed of him were very... Like, I, like you're saying, they weren't very actory, but... Underwhelming. It was very much him... Like, it was the him molding her kind of stuff, which is yeah. kind of a director role. It wasn't... It wasn't the scene with him yeah. and his brother in the car. Yeah. Right. Or... Awesome. Him in the garage, like anything like yeah. that, like oh. which then they started showing them much later. Yeah. But they should have been putting those yes earlier in. Yeah. yeah. What was the scene like after the Golden Globes? They showed an actor scene right after to promote Star Is Born, and it was him in um the rehab. And I was yeah. like, this, oh, yeah. I and people were like, "You're kidding, right?" Like he truly, he was a great actor. And I, as much as this, obviously, this season has gone and passed. He's going to get nominated someday. He's going to win. He's going to have his thing. He is right now yeah. our, he's our just, new Leo yeah, at this he's, point. He's a pretty boy. And oh, yeah. pretty you, boys at the Oscars don't do well. Do you think that part of it is that people were like, oh, it's kind of gimmicky that it's just like, oh, well, he learned to like play guitar and sing for this. No. And that's, no? Okay. Because he was like an I, alcoholic. I think it was like he played. No, I know. But you know what I mean? Like. The no, headline no. has been like, oh my God, Bradley Cooper can he sings. Yeah. yeah, you know what no, I mean? Like, do you I, think that's like why it's like overlooking some of his acting? No, I think I think honestly they focused more on him being a director and producing it right. and making it rather than him acting in it. And yeah, I yeah. and I think that was the mistake. Cause like right. I, honestly, co- like for someone that follows awards, I knew starting in September, like Alfonso Cuaron, he was winning best actor. There was no stopping that train. Oh, you mean director? Director, director. director. Yeah. yeah, director. Sorry. Um, so that was in the bag. So that's when I was like, he better haul his ass over and campaign for best actor like he's, you know, going to win the lottery. Like, I swear to God. Yeah. And Rami Malek, I have a question for you now because I know you didn't like the film, but I have I a... did. I just didn't <laughs> think it was as – that was – when we first saw it, I was like, that was good. But okay. I didn't right. think I, it was I like – I agree. To I agree. Death and I, I agree. Now, but now I have a question for you. Do you think, um, do you think the Brian Singer part played a part in people voting for him, like a sympathy percent. vote? And I've been saying this for a long time. Yeah. I didn't think, I think a lot of people had the mindset of don't punish everyone involved in this film because of and one person. People mm-hmm. were mad about that, which right. I, I agree. I kind of agree with that concept because in all honesty, like Brian Singer wasn't, the only part of this movie like he wasn't right he's and i a- do and i feel like i actually voiced that opinion on this podcast when we were talking about it yeah. but i think a lot of people were like don't let this person like terrible person overshadow this story 
Yeah. And the efforts that went into telling Freddie Mercury's story. Now, my issue is not that I just, I just, I don't know. I just think everything needed to be completely separated. I think that you can't give people kind of like a pity vote. And I don't know if that's what was going on. Oh, yeah. With a lot of this. I think kind of that's what was going on with editing. But yeah, no, he. With the. I know. uh, I was talking to a friend of mine and she was very pro Bohemian Rhapsody. My thing has always been that if you are starring in a biopic, it's not enough to just like become that person. Then you have to do a good job storytelling. Like half of it is. You have to embody Freddie Mercury. I get that. But the other yeah. half is you have to make an impact as Freddie Mercury. And I don't think he did that half. I, I can see that, yeah. I can yeah. see that, too. But now, I don't think they made, he made impact on us. I think he made a lot more. Clearly impact. not. <laughs> but, yeah, clearly not. But now, here's the thing. Now, so my, my friend, who was very pro-Bohemian, she goes, you know, well, you know, any anybody could have played that role and won the Oscar. I, I disagree. So. I disagree. I disagree. No, I don't think so. Because I think, I don't think anyone could have done as good a job becoming Freddie Mercury as yes. he did. And yeah. I agree. And I tried to say that, but... Why did she... Wasn't it supposed to be... Uh, what's his face? It was Sasha Baron Cohen. It was Baron Cohen. But I, th- another thing goes into the production of it, where the, the main guys in Queen didn't like the script that he had. And that was the problem I had with the film was the script. I didn't think it was an honest, I felt like I was watching a concert when I it saw was, it. Yeah. It was that. Yeah, and it was, right. it was, yeah, it wasn't deep. And what bothered me is I know a lot of the critics point this out was that. And I had this mindset of like, you know, the people that made queen, the other guys, they were producing it. So they had a say in what was in the script and what was not. Mm-hmm. I always felt like it was always Freddie's fault. Like everything <laughs> happened, and right. they were like, "Well, like, Freddie's like, let's hang out." And he's like, "Well, Freddie, I have a wife. I can't go out." I'm like, "Okay, buddy. Like, you're not. He's not the yeah. only sinner in this group. Yeah. Like, you but all do bad stuff." I would say that I I agree with that, but I almost think sometimes that it they did that in a way that made it seem like, "Wait, what's going on? They just hate yeah. Freddie all of a sudden." Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I did sometimes feel like it almost topic. made you feel bad for Freddie intentionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was kind of a balance of that. Because you're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, they weren't showing the bits of, like, why um, Brian and what's his... Yeah. The kid that I loved. Yeah. um, Were feeling that way. You know, like, they didn't show, like, the whys of it a lot until it was like, oh, Freddie just showed up late and then he he is a song. And now, you know what I mean? Like, it's... I agree. I don't know. It was just all over the place. That's what... (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah. I mean... I... Which I don't have a problem with. I'm on the record as, like, Mamma Mia is one of my favorite movies of all time. Also all over the place. (laughs) But Mamma Mia was not nominated for Best Picture. (laughs) I agree. (laughs) Wasn't nominated for Best Picture. Wasn't getting... The... Cher didn't get a supporting actress nomination. You know yes. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm Even saying. Even though she is an Oscar winner. <laughs> That's another story. That's a yeah. great win. Um, Honestly, I almost wanted Bohemian Rhapsody to win because I had a Mamma Mia 2 who <laughs> could have beat this for Beck's Picture tweet all queued up. Yeah. So, oh. On that note, let's talk let's about go. Best Picture. Yes. And I'm t- off on the record, if I see another article that's like, Green Book is the worst best picture winner yeah, since Crash. I'm gonna flip. I'm I saw like a lot of those. Even this podcast I listened to that it's a film uh podcast. They they predicting the Oscars, they didn't even think Green Book had a chance. I really think people were underestimating no, the I, appeal of it. I so, thought it did have a chance when we it, no, it, oh, it, it definitely did. Definitely it was definitely in the did. And it was the front runner to begin it with. It won the PGA, it won the Golden Globe. And think about this in September at the Toronto uh Critics, uh, not critics, uh, the Toronto Film Festival, it beat out A Star is Born for the Audience Award, which is the most prestigious award there. So, did not think know about, that. Yes, <laughs> it did. That. That's why it, I knew about it in September. That's when I was like, this is yeah. a movie to watch out for. So, when you, I hadn't seen Green Book and I still haven't, but when you saw it, my thing was I was surprised that you were like, this is a contender because. The, com- the trailers for me all seemed very, this is a nice story. Like, this is surface level. You know, like, we talk a lot about, like, The Hate You Give and Love, Simon being, like, nice movies and important movies, but not necessarily, like, that deep or, like, meaningful. That's kind of how the trailers seemed to me. Like, oh, this is a nice story about, like, an interracial friendship. Great. I didn't think it was going to be, like, oh, my God, this is deep and impactful and, like, is a best picture I think what made project. it work was for me especially was the chemistry between Mahershala Ali and Viggo Mortensen. Yeah. I right. thought they had really great 
chemistry and in a way elevated the film because I right. said this to her, I said I, I thought the screenplay was one of my least favorite parts of the yeah, it wasn't film. Like I thought the really... screenplay kind of sucked, to be honest. Yeah. Right. Well, even so then when it was presented, um, that's when I did sort of kind of see I think probably the editing, again, I didn't see this movie, but just the way it was presented, it was very different than the commercials and the trailers that I had previously seen. Like you could kind of see like Maharsha Ali like looking even the way he looked at him in the car was like you could tell that he was like thinking about like things that he had said like clearly there was more impact than that what was just seen in the trailers if that makes sense i also it sucks again we're gonna like talk about this but like peter Farrelly and nick valanga which obviously they really caused a whole mess out of this yeah so it sucks well because, that's what i'm surprised about yeah, them winning with, miss the controversy yeah, with Vigo and Harshala, like, that's, like, a big thing. Like, it was really about them, the whole movie. Yeah. So I kind of get why people, we talked about this, like, you can't just have one person and, like, have it look bad on the rest of them. But I also think Twitter is an echo chamber. Yes, and I also think a lot of people didn't watch the movie. I, think I mean, I people, didn't. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think a lot of people Or people went in with have, a bias. Yeah, with a bias. And I, I think some of them are, sometimes they dig themselves into like deeper holes and stuff like that with the whole Nick Valonga when he, you know, they asked him about the whole controversy with the whole family. And he just said like, Don Shirley told me not to contact his family. Right. And I didn't know they existed until, um, we were filming. And I was like, okay, obviously you didn't yeah. know they existed because Don Shirley told you not to contact them. But I, I think that was just bad wording. On it his was part. bad wording on his part, but also at the same time, like, people were hating on the fact that like this is what Don Shirley's family like hated this movie and in a sense if you go back on like Don Shirley's documentaries and stuff like that he has talked about how he doesn't talk to his family right it so, says something when his friend is the executor of his will yeah. and not his family and like no his, and i agree Don and i think Shirley's it's friend. kind of i do think it's kind of like we see this all the time of like family members don't like when they're not portrayed in a positive way yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean it wasn't true yeah yes exactly and I think it's like I, when Meghan Markle's dad is making a whole big stink oh about stuff God. with her. And it's like, well, we don't that even have a relationship. You know, it's like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, um, exactly. So, yeah, no, and it was crazy. And the whole thing with, like, Maharshal, like, I know you didn't see it as that. But, like, it, the story was mostly about Maharshal. And I think if they did put him as best actor, he wasn't going to win. So they kind of, ha- like, there was a big yeah. Yeah. that he should win best you should go in for best supporting. And I think a lot of people had issues with that because it was Don Shirley's movie. But at the same it, time, like you have to think the of it movie, strategically. Yeah. Right. No. And I, I think that's a hundred percent. I think, I think that's fun- also why like Olivia Coleman was for best actors and not supporting yes. because they wanted like to be able to put Emma Stone and Rachel Weiss for and supporting and other them. things. Yeah. And, and that's what I think, especially with movies like this with green book. What I think the fact was that when I, when I, when I like look at leading supporting roles, one of the things a teacher told me is when you're watching a film, does the character start and end the film? Right. So, for instance, I always think of Viola Davis in The Help because originally she was going to be campaigned as supporting because Emma mm-hmm. Stone was the lead. But Viola is a heavy part of the film. She starts and ends the film, which justifies a lead actress nomination. Right. And I think if you put that in the eyes of Green Book with Vigo, you can't put Vigo in supporting. Yeah. Right. Okay. And especially when, especially when Nick Valalonga is writing it, obviously his father is Gonna going be to be part. a huge part. So I think it was more of a strategic campaign. No, right. yeah. Sure I mean, not. you have to be smart with these nominations anyway. And the favorite, yeah. that was hard. I know, I've heard, I read articles where it was hard for them. Yeah. Sony had a tough time. I heard they were even asking critics how they would do it. Some... Well, because initially, I was always, like, I was shocked that Olivia Coleman wasn't for supporting. Yeah. Because to yeah. me, that was not Secret, a story yeah. about Olivia Coleman's character. And she would have watched, she would have beat Regina King, I think, honestly. Yeah. Cakewalk. I think so now. Yeah, I think so too. Because um, she did have an incredibly dynamic performance. But then, but then the thing is, if you're Sony, do you guarantee Olivia a win in supporting and maybe not get all three in? Or yeah. do, you do, do you do Emma and lead, Rachel and Olivia? Or do you do Rachel? The problem is, those roles were so interchangeable. 
you were yeah, kind it's of, like which ones they made lead. the but yeah. ultimately ultimately I think they made the right decision. I yeah. think so too. Looking back at how award season went, I do think they made the right decision. Um in terms of best picture, I I didn't see Green Book, but the movies that I did see in this category to me weren't best picture movies. The closest would have been the favorite. And I again I don't think it was good enough to be a best yeah, picture. So I agree with that. I I also, thought it was gonna be Roma. I didn't see Roma, but I thought it was gonna be Roma. We okay. I didn't know this. Matt told me this, but Netflix put in twenty five million dollars for that campaign for Roma. It just it oh, reminds really? me of Harvey yeah. Weinstein with uh, Shakespeare in Love twenty years ago. Yeah, I and, don't think I realized until very recently that Shakespeare in Love had won a Best Picture, and as soon as I realized that, I was shocked. Saving Private Ryan, it's considered one of the biggest yeah. upsets in Oscar history. It's crazy. I agree with that, but it's like the same. I don't know. Roma, it, it, I thought was gonna win. Yeah, we talked about. Oh, we, I mean, we all anyway. we all did. I mean, yeah. I I knew that Green Book had a good shot, but I thought ultimately Roma would prevail. So I was kind of. Do you think it's you know, because as it was a, on as, a as a as a film lover, I I'm kind of happy that Netflix didn't win. Yeah. Um. I well, like I think Netflix. That- like, I'm not saying like I'm happy Roma didn't win. You know, whatever. I'm I'm more happy that you know Ted Sarandos you know isn't running you know, around Hollywood saying, like, we won, you know, $25 million was worth it. Um, I do think what happened, though, I do think the preferential ballot really came into play this year. Yeah. I the way really, they I, do I, it. 100%. But do you, do you think it was because it was on Netflix that people were kind of like... Yeah, I do. I do, th- I do think, I, I think there are, there's a good majority of people in Hollywood that are anti-Netflix and one of the one of the reasons I thought Roma was going to win was because I feel like it was a hit with the newer class of Academy members that have been inducted. Yeah, M- many of them are, um, you know, women, minorities, but also international voters, which I didn't right. realize. There's a lot. Yeah. I, I don't know and at the it's end of funny. Class. I was reading an article last week. Uh, no, I was reading an article yesterday about how a lot of theaters didn't show Roma when they did their best picture lineups. Oh, they, really? They don't want to support Netflix, and especially the ones in Europe. Oh, really? Because Netflix takes into their money, and money in theaters in Europe is already declining. Yeah, yeah. Like, the AMC, you know how they do that thing every every year where, like, they show all the best pictures? Yeah. They, they made it clear January, whatever the day the nominations were, Roma was not included. Right. I So well, there is there is a sentiment playing against yeah. Netflix, which I think hurt Roma yeah. in the you end. You said that in order to qualify for Best Picture, you have to be in a theater, right, in New York and L.A. for like a week? Yes, to, to qualify for the Academy Awards, you have That's to play nice. in a theater before December 31st. I think L.A., but I think most just do in New York and L.A. to be safe. I believe it's just Los Angeles, but um, I could be wrong. It could be both yeah. New York and Los Angeles. And I really, but I really think that the preferential ballot really helped yeah because you have to do it one to ten right so like here or... do you know how it works you rank them right yeah you rank yes them. but yeah. here's how it goes you rank them and the way they tally it is whoever got the least if say all right so if, say a film gets over 50 percent number one votes yeah that film automatically wins yeah but oh it's the majority what okay so what happens is they will take um everyone's votes and they take whatever you put your number one film as, and they pile it up. Right, okay. They're talking, whatever. Whoever got the lowest, they take out. Whatever, so say that was, for instance, I don't know. Um, if I put a if, Bohemian Rhapsody first. If you put Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's do that one. No, if, all right, if, if you put no. it first, and I put, say, A Star is Born last, mm-hmm. which I didn't, but that's, anyway. And say number eight was A Star is Born, they will take that out of the running. But okay. whatever I put for my second pick. Oh, they get, then it gets put up. And say, okay. I put, say I put Green Book as my number two. Then they would add that to the Green Book pile. The Green Book pile. Okay. Because and as you're saying it, I'm like, why do they do that if they score. don't just like add the score stuff together? But I'm in like sorority mode in terms of ranking of like, yeah. oh, how you like 
yeah, but that makes sense. I'm I'm like 95%. That's how it works. No, they basically, I, I think so. whatever you, so they do all the number ones and they take out the least, the, the part the one that got the least number yeah. ones. They take those yeah. ballots and put they put them the number two. Okay. They do it again for but three, four I until a majority heard hits. That some people don't put all the movies down. Yeah. Which, which ultimately which hurts. Sucks. Yeah. Which hurts you because that means like, if you put that your black, vote is less likely yeah. to count, right? Okay. Yeah, your vote's gonna less count. So I think that's dumb. That's like that's literally in sorority. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that's I mean, yeah. Okay, dumb that makes sense. Moves. All right. Well, I don't know. Overall, I thought it was a better Oscars. But yeah, it moved on quicker. I mean, uh, I how many more times can we talk about Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper definitely fucking behind the scenes? Um, I don't. They, so. they definitely feel, are. <laughs> as much as we talk I'm about that, I feel there. bad for. Uh, I feel so bad. Because, you know, like, obviously, I feel like it might be just be played up for this whole entire run. And they could have really I good definitely chemistry. do think that has a factor. But I also don't think it's a coincidence that Lady Gaga definitely went in for the kiss. And she yeah. also broke up with her fiancé in the last two weeks. Like, yeah. like, there's just a lot of things that I'm just like, this if is they're not, be they should be. Another comparison to Leo, but it's going to be like another Leo and Kate situation. Yeah, I agree. To me, though, I can, I don't know. I have very strong feelings about just, like, when people have very strong, like, best friend chemistry, and that's what I really get from Leo and Kate. Mm-hmm. I don't get that from Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga at all. I get, like, she it's funny. is. I don't get the lover. I don't get the lover chemistry. I get. I just get two very good friends. Oh, well, then their friendship is unhealthy, is what I mean, it comes down to. Is also, that is. I'm such a stan. Like I've always loved Lady Gaga, but like now, like it's heightened. You know what I mean? Like she oh deserved God. that Oscar. Like I talked about this. I was like, I will the burn. Great. I will burn the. I know. I know. World. I know. I know. But who? I. But like I. So like honestly, like I'm so happy for her and the fact that like what she has done in the past ten years for pop culture and like society is like. Great. See, I am like the poster child for overexposure annoy- annoys me, and I like have never liked her less. Oh really? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just I'll like you're honest. all up in my face, and you're so like earnest all the time that I'm like you're full of shit. But then it's gonna just die be down. Be a normal like, person. In the next six months, it's gonna die down. Like people are gonna like yeah. talk about her as much because she's gonna be Molly, like, working. Yeah, that's so, like that. So I think you're gonna like her more. That's how I felt about Anne Hathaway. In uh, 2012, 2013. Yeah. The Le Miz Oscars. Right. No, it's just and, she's but, in your you face. And then she took a break for a year, and I was like, this is the Anne I love. Why yeah. did I hate you? Yeah. Exactly. That's my thing. Like, I'm just like, I just don't know. Just give it time. Give it time. Yeah. I, I need to, but I just need them to stop shoving her down my throat now. Now yeah. that the Oscars are over, get her out of, like, she needs to go on, like, a six-month sabbatical to Russia or something and just get out of here. She's because Mexico like for a week. <laughs> After she, after I like, know, but she was still in the news all the time. I know because it's like, I'm off the deep end. yeah, no, once it like kind of dies down, she's gonna be in Vegas. We'll be fine. Yeah, I need her to just like get out of my face for a little bit. No, honestly, we, t- I'm, oh, I love it. All right, all right, do you beat this? To a yeah, bush. I mean, thank you so much for coming on and talking about yeah, that. You pleasure. know so much more about movies than us. So oh, like, I'm, I'm glad a... I could infuse my knowledge with you yeah. guys. Like, let me just give you a short history of the Oscars real yeah. quick, <laughs> and then we can get into it. Like, oh my goodness, gives yeah. a little authenticity to our Oscar episode. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, just a little us, bit. Makes us look like we know exactly what we're doing. Not just us being like, I don't know. I didn't really like how he looked in this one scene. Yeah. He gave me weird vibes, which is like John Mulaney is so funny. Chris Evans. John Mulaney I'm, in, good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in gentleman. love with Chris Evans. So like him coming out with and helping Regina King. Yeah. Boosted my mood. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to talk about. But yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, thank you so much, Matt. Oh, no problem. And um, I'm so glad I could be here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Yeah. All right. And um, on that note, only, on that note, uh, we have this. I feel like there really wasn't much drama in this episode for The Bachelor. Oh yeah, we're gonna get into The Bachelor now. To be clear, <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, like, um, <laughs> I. As many of you know, if you guys watched last week's episode, um, I have already know. I already know who wins. I already know. I know. How I'm so down. pissed at you. 
you know, I'm not because, because I'm like, I want to have this conversation that I want to have right now, and you already know who wins, so I can't even have that like the conversation the way I, I mean, want to have. I can be completely unbiased as I can because I already had the same opinions I had before. No, you can't because now I'm having a conversation of like who I think is gonna win. Okay. Based off of how the way the episode was edited last night and like how stuff went on. And you know well, if it's right or wrong. So I hate that. It's definitely coming down to Hannah G and Cassie. That is just a fact. I can't even believe that uh, Taisha is still on this show. I can't um, even believe that. I'm going to be, I'm going to say my opinion on Hannah G. She has absolutely no personality whatsoever. And the one thing that really came out was that freaking rap at the end. I know, but and this is... I'm kind of shocked. Like, going through... I, I did go through past things with her and stuff like that. Like, I guess they do have this type of c- connection. But she really has no personality. Okay, so I have to wholeheartedly disagree. I will say, I do think she suffers from pretty girl personality. In the case that she oh, never had to learn to be funny. She never had to learn to be relatable. She never had to learn skills to make her fun in a conversation where you can't see her face. Because yeah. people are just like, oh, you're pretty, so you win. Yeah. I get that. Like, I get. She's a 10. Like, a is, 10 and 11 didn't need to have to yeah. really work hard for a boyfriend. She's a knockout, so whatever. And that's clearly what happened with the rap situation. Oh, yeah. People were just like, oh, my God, Hannah, you're a great rapper because she was just pretty. They just, like, let her live her life. The rap was terrible. But what are you going to do? Oh. That's how I would sound if I rapped. Maybe <laughs> I wouldn't go on national TV and be like, I've been rapping for years. I'm a great rapper. If that's that, I wouldn't do that because I yeah. know I would rap the same way Hannah G did. Yeah. But whatever. We can also just start calling her Hannah now because yeah. Hannah B is gone. But- Here's what I did. Fi- I-, I knew this beforehand. I was not going to tell you it. But I guess now I can tell you this. Hannah B actually came to the date. What date? It's like she showed up to Hannah G's date, like to the hometown date. But they never she aired. She did? Yes. She crashed I the date? To, I wanted to tell you this last week. Because wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> she crashes the date. And what, tries to like, win back Colton? Yes, or something like that. She, Because Birmingham and Tuscaloosa are 45 minutes apart. Right. So, like, she could just easily show up. So, she did. What she happened? Did. They just edited it out. But what happened? What did she do? You, you obviously, like, I guess really nothing happened considering the fact that he did end up picking, like, Hannah G or he didn't, like, take Hannah B back. But he took... He was eliminated for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Um... So, I don't know what... I think they might do it in the girls' tell-all next week. But she showed up. And that's why, like... I obviously like you're really mad at me that I know all this, but like, is I from spoilers. Things. You know that, yeah. Okay. And then I saw on my timeline someone posted here's a, like a few uh, pictures of Hannah B. It was supposed to be aired last night, but I guess they cut it out for editing, and it was her wow. like in a dress. That's insane. Okay, that changes things. Um, I mean, not really, but whatever. But, like, it changes, like, your perspective of, like... Here is why I don't agree that Hannah has no personality. Is because of when she's... She, it's a little bit of a clip. It's so small. It's, like, she's talking to the camera in, like, an interview confessional. And she says something about how much she likes him or how much chemistry she has. And she's, like, insert montage of Ugly. Hannah and Colton making out here like to me I'm like oh that's like a little that gives me an indication that she's like kind of a normal person of her being like insert here like do this whatever that. like her just like getting excited about a boy but not and I just like oh my god he gives me butterflies kind of yeah. way like in a more relatable and fun way yeah like she gets it um yeah but still doesn't give her that much but like, you know, I'm, I'm saying like I think like Cassie and like I'm Tasha, I would agree with you when that whole thing with Caitlyn was like, this is bullshit. When Tasha got her rose, I was like, 100%. Yeah, yeah. but my percent. thing is it all comes down to editing. And we've been talking about this for so long because, I mean, I hated Hannah B in the beginning. And then I she grew on me because the way she was edited changed. Yeah. They're just editing Hannah as like, oh, we have this connection, but I don't need to spend any time with you because we just yeah. have this connection. And, like, you're just good looking. You got the first impression, Rose. I don't need to go on a date with you. You still got a rose. We just make out the whole time on our date. That's how she's being edited. So do you think... I'm not going to like, do you think she, because the way they're editing it, it's like for people. I to mean, that's why work. I think it's going to be Cassie. 
Yeah, I, I could see that. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the editing right. is, like, a big I don't, factor. I, I think they want to get to a point where it down, it's down to Hannah and Cassie. Because I I just, I think her, like, Colton and Tasha are more, I feel like they're, like, good friends now. But they're not, yeah, like. Yeah, I think she, like, yeah, I agree with that. And not for, not, like, not to be a dick, I think Colton has a type. Oh, and 100% I, has a type. I think it's pretty blonde girl. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Even if you just look at the majority of the girls that were left, like, so Kerpa and Tasha really, in the last two episodes, are the only girls that don't fit that mold. Because even if you want to put Kaylin as, like, pretty brunette, but she's closer to, like, the pretty white girl, stereo, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Then no, I agree. Anything else. And it's felt like he was friend zoning Kerpa and Tasha both last week. Oh, and then Tasha sure. got the rose. But you know what I mean? Like I'm saying, like I'm not trying to say, like I think Colton like doesn't like diverse girls or anything like that. I just think his type is pretty blonde girl. Yeah, I think because Heather, for Heather to stay as long as she did, oh, and then yeah. eliminate herself was insane. Yeah, I think she's was... pretty blonde girl. Yeah. Check. Even exactly. Hannah B, pretty blonde girl. That's how she got as far as she did. Because she yep. basically friends owned herself a lot and whatever. Demi, pretty blonde girl. Demi oh, terrified him. Demi scared him shitless. Stayed kind of a long time. Pretty blonde girl. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. his type is pretty blonde girl. It's going to come down to the two of them. And I think they're editing it in a way that it's like, why would he pick Hannah? He has such a connection with Cassie and doesn't have any kind of connection with Hannah. Yeah. I'm, I agree with you on that extent, but... I don't really know what specifically happens next week. Obviously, we figure out that it's the Colton jumps the fence episode. Finally. (laughs) Oh, my God. I definitely know what happens. And I didn't read this anywhere. I just think. So, you know, Cassie was on a reality show before The Bachelor. Yeah, for her ex-boyfriend. I I think her ex-boyfriend is probably going to crash. No, um, her ex-boyfriend talked about it. He, like, said, like, straight up, like, I asked her to okay it. And I knew, like, like once she got into The Bachelor, like, I let go of my feelings and everything. But, like, I asked her to okay. And the only reason I put it out at the time is because I knew it was going to get traction and everything. I don't think he's going to show up. Um, no, here's my thing. Maybe he won't show up. But someone from the show or someone's going to tell him about the show. I don't think he already knew about the show that she was on. Because the way, look at the commercials and that kind of stuff. He's like, oh, my God, like this, like he's pissed. He's not even just like upset or hurt. Mm-hmm. He's pissed when he goes towards that fence. And the kind of things he's saying make it seem like he was blindsided by new information. So I think it's going to be about the fact that she was on the show. But like, why would he be mad about that if it was about like an ex-boyfriend? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. But she also hasn't said I'm falling in love with you yet. Yeah. Everyone um, else has. And she's I... still there. How is she still there and she has not even proven to you that she has any kind of she has any kind of feelings like yours he's so far up her ass though like you know know. like she's like she's definitely gonna win yeah like he's talked about like his connection with like even in this episode when he talked about the girls like his when he talked about cassie like you knew like he's been in love with her already for like weeks now like you know he's already full on like the other girls he's like i'm falling in love with you but like no he's like been in love with cassie like which is such a big difference well, that's what i kind of think he wanted to talk to nick about nick? yeah chris who what's the name of the guy chris, chris harrison. harrison right i don't know why i said nick chris. yeah like, nick. um who's i chris? just um i, I think i just I think <laughs> i'm gonna talk yeah go thank talk. you um, <laughs> I just think that he kind of realized that, like, Cassie is winning. Because how do you say, I need these girls to prove to me that they're ready for this and prove to me that we have, like, they feel the same way. Like, I need this to be a real relationship, not just me liking them. And then give a rose to Cassie and not to Kaylin. I think he now knows that maybe he's smitten with Hannah and he was interested in ha- uh, Kaylin and Taisha. But I think he's realizing, based on his own actions, that Cassie's going to win. And he's like, why even have this show for the rest of it? Or, like, can I not go to Fantasy Suits? I don't know how Fantasy Suits works. Like, it's just, I don't know. I just think he and him and Chris are going to talk about the fact that he knows who's winning already. Yeah, and um, 
I was going to add on to that. Like, they said that this ending of the season is so completely off from the other 22. I mean, I've never watched The Bachelor before. So yeah, well, you know how, like, it end, like, obviously, like, all of them end with, like, a rose ceremony? Like, no, it does like, with proposals. Yes. Right. So, like, they said, like, it's completely different. Like, you'll... Like, oh, you mean prob- the individual shows end with the rose ceremony? Yeah. Yeah, but... um. No, I'm, like, talking about oh, yeah, the rose ceremony to, like, proposal, whatever. Like, they said this is going to be one of the biggest, like, Well, they don't upsets. end with a rose ceremony, though. They end with separate interactions, don't they? Then they, like, edit it to be, like, who is he proposing to and who yeah, is he yeah. breaking up with. Yeah. Yeah. But this year, it's, like, I don't know, I'm different, I guess. I don't really know the whole thing. Yeah. Well, Because whatever. I haven't watched it. But that's the... I don't know. That's what I caught. Island is a shoo-in to be the next Bachelorette, though. Yes, and I really hope she does become the Bachelorette. I'll be very upset because who else from this season could be the? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be from this season. I the only other person I think it could be would be Elise because they can't give it to Demi because Demi is too much like the crazy villain, and they want yeah. her to be able. I think Demi is a shoe in for Bachelor in Paradise. Oh yeah, um, sh- and she's gonna pop up in Bachelor world for a long time she's definitely going to get a dancing with the star spot like she's just going to be in the reality tv circuit for a while oh yeah for a while yeah maybe That's she'll like, do like they did bachelor winter games maybe they'll do like bachelor summer games and she'll be in that you know they're gonna she's gonna be the bachelor circuit the reality tv circuit for a while yeah um maybe oh. elise would be the only other person that i would say could be no. the next bachelorette because they can't give it to Heather either. Because she literally just had her first kiss. She's not yeah. gonna get married. That's insane. Yeah, it's insane. But I um, what was I? I was just talking about how it's so odd to me because like the Bachelor and the Bachelor. Like I know they're saying, oh, I want to get married and stuff like that. Like at this point, out of all the twenty three bachelors, only one of them is in a successful marriage. So at this point, you're not in this to get married. You're really in it to I get. I mean, the clearly. Like none of the, none of the, what's the guy Sean? Like he says he goes every bachelor after me always comes up to me and asks me for advice, and every single year they don't take it. Right. <laughs> so it's like, I, and like you're taking advice of other bachelors. But like he's the only one with a successful marriage. Like he has right. kids now with the with the woman he. No, I know. With. It's just like big on Twitter too. Big Very on Twitter. Funny. Yeah, big on Twitter. Uh, he <laughs> watches it, and so like it's just. It's so funny to me when yeah, they... I don't know. I just but... think the way that she interviewed or the way that they showed her interviews at the end, she's clearly going to be the next Bachelorette. I don't understand why they don't just give it to the runner-up every year. But I guess they yeah, want to have like, the good personality for it. I just think that if you make it to the end and you don't, you don't get the proposal or the engagement, then you get the new show. And then you definitely get it next time. That's how I think it should work. But in all honesty, like... Okay, you said that you think Hannah G and Cassie are going to be the final two. Do you think Hannah G could be the Bachelorette? She doesn't have, like I said, she's a yeah, she I has do. Pretty personality. They're, she's they're pretty editing personal. her that way. Yeah, yeah. You think? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if she'll be a good Bachelorette though. I think. Well, I don't think she's going to be. I think it's going to be Kaylin. Yeah, I, I think I mean, she's the, like positive to be Kaylin. Oh yeah, and I hope it is. Like I, I watch shit out of that. Yeah. Like I that's know. she. I feel like she'd be the best one, yeah. but um. I'm excited to see to see what they're all gonna tell about this shit because yeah. you know, I like it'll be good. It so, seems like it's gonna be electric next so week. The way this is gonna end, like obviously they're all gonna have issues, so that's why I'm just excited. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. So um, that's really that much we had to talk about. I know we got uh, through a lot. <laughs> we went through a lot. Like yeah. we always say, like. Oh, we don't have enough. Like, I'm like, oh, like, what are we gonna talk about? But then, like, we end up like having the have longest so episodes ever. Um, right, so, but that's gonna be it for us. So yes. we will see you guys on Friday for Riverdale rundown for real yes. this time. And, we think. And, yes, for real. I looked it up. Okay. <laughs> it's on. I was so upset. Anyways, but next week I think that's like. I don't know what we're gonna talk about. I finally finished watched American Vandal. And then. I'm just doing laundry, so I'm just gonna leave this right here. It's fine. My brother was doing laundry too. Shout um, out, I guess, to Greasy for being a national champion. I guess you wanted yes, a shout, shout out. Is that her trophy? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. No, I'm not moving my camera again. <laughs>
time. You guys, we need, oh, what else? Yeah. That's uh, going to be it for us this week. We'll see us. you on Friday. Yes, we'll see you, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.